Akathisia is one of the motor disorder that is associated with psychomotor restlessness. It is a motor disorder where people have an urge to move and this condition is particularly induced by antipsychotics. So medications like haloperidol, chlorpromzine, flufinazine and many of these antipsychotics can induce akathisia. In such people we can observe increased pacing, rocking in the movements, they can cross or uncross their legs. Such people may also have increased muscle tone and repeated movements of lower extremities like hands and feet. It also results in the inability to sit and they can also have involuntary movements in the sleep that are periodically observed during the sleep. Along with these motor disturbances, people may also have increased anxiety and agitation. Symptoms of akathisia also resemble another disorder, restless leg syndrome. This is another condition of motor disorder that is associated with involuntary movements and an urge to move the legs. However, akathisia is somewhat different from restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome is commonly observed at the evening. People may have more leg movements during the evening and night. However, akathisia can be observed at any time of the day and the people may have different postures and involuntary movements in the sleep. Such symptoms are not observed in restless leg syndrome. So akathisia is one of the motor disorder that have many symptoms that can be observed at any time of the day and it is particularly induced by use of antipsychotics. These antipsychotics can be classified into two categories, typical and atypical. Typical antipsychotics are the first generation antipsychotics, whereas atypical antipsychotics are the second generation or new generation antipsychotics. The risk of akathisia is more associated with the use of typical antipsychotics. Particularly, highly potent drugs like haloperidol can increase the risk of akathisia. However, few of the atypical antipsychotics can also induce akathisia to a lesser extent. For example, clozapine is one of the atypical antipsychotic which can produce a significant akathisia in the people. However, the risk is more pronounced with typical agents compared with atypical agents. Both typical and atypical antipsychotics can block dopamine receptors, but their affinity as well as rate of dissociation is different. Typical antipsychotics are having the more affinity towards the dopamine D2 receptors. On the other hand, atypical antipsychotics mainly block 5-HT2A receptors and other receptors. They can also block dopamine D2 receptors with lower affinity and fast dissociation. Therefore, typical agents are having more effect on D2 receptors which leads to extrapyramidal side effects. These extrapyramidal side effects can be classified into four types acute dystonias which are associated with disturbance in the muscle tone and they are shortly developed. Second one is a tardu dyskinesia which is slowly developed and it is a muscle movement disorder. Pseudo Parkinsonism is another condition which resembles the Parkinsonism and associated with muscle rigidity and stiffness. Finally, akathisia is the restlessness associated with use of antipsychotics. So these are the four extrapyramidal side effects. All these extrapyramidal side effects are associated with movement disorders and particularly they are linked with increased blocking of D2 receptors. That's why typical agents have more incidence of akathisia in the people. Acute akathisia can be developed within two weeks of the treatment with antipsychotics and particularly the incidence increases with the dose of antipsychotics. With an increase in the dose, symptoms like agitation can also be observed and the risk of akathisia is elevated with high potency antipsychotics like haloperidol. Similarly, if you have the depot formulations which are suitable for injections like flufinazine, they can constantly supply the medication into the body which results in cyclic akathisia, symptoms of restlessness that are periodically observed in the people. Akathisia can also be produced by few other medications like antidepressants, particularly selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like fluoxetine and peroxetine can produce akathisia. Even this disorder observed with TCA's tricyclic antidepressants. Few of the calcium channel blockers can also induce akathisia and even few anti-emetic drugs also induce akathisia to a lesser extent. 
but in many of the people akathisia is mainly produced by use of antipsychotics which is shortly developed within 2 weeks of the treatment now let us see how this akathisia is treated one category of drugs are the beta blockers that can be used to control the symptoms of akathisia one of the medication is a propranolol which is a non selective beta blocker generally propranolol can be used to control the tremors in the people because this drug can alter the blood supply to the skeletal muscle thereby it can reduce contractions of the skeletal muscle however propranolol is not completely effective in controlling akathisia and is also associated with of the important side effects like bradycardia and hypotension even though propranolol can relieve few of the symptoms of akathisia but it is not a first line agent as it is not completely effective however this drug can reduce involuntary movements that are observed in akathisia second type of drugs are the benzodiazepines benzodiazepines like dizepam clonazepam can also be used to control akathisia and just like uh, beta blockers benzodiazepines are also not completely effective for controlling the symptoms of akathisia benzodiazepines are going to reduce the activity of gaba in the brain thereby they can control the anxiety and the induced sedation therefore benzodiazepines can control the anxiety as well as irritability in the people with akathisia next one is the mirtazapine mirtazapine is one of the antidepressant which is classified as atypical antidepressant at a low dose mirtazapine can control the symptoms of akathisia and it can reduce the involuntary movements and this is the first line agent for controlling the symptoms however at very higher doses mirtazapine can increase the risk of akathisia therefore mirtazapine should be carefully used to control the symptoms of akathisia particularly at a very low dose any other factors which increase the dose of this medication may worsen the symptoms in the category of drugs are the anticholinergics generally anticholinergics can control involuntary movements therefore they are more useful in the people with parkinsonism benzodiazepine is one of the medication which can be used to control the extra pyramidal side effects that are produced with antipsychotic medication so in people who are having akathisia associated with parkinsonism benzodiazepine can be used this medication can reduce the cholinergic transmission within the brain thereby it can control the motor activities finally vitamin b6 supplements can also be given to control symptoms of akathisia however the efficacy of the treatment is not clear but they may help in improving the symptoms so at optimal dose vitamin b6 can also be used in antipsychotic induced akathisia so that's all about this symptoms causes and treatment options of akathisia this movement disorder is mainly produced by use of antipsychotics particularly first generation antipsychotics however few of the second generation antipsychotics can also induce akathisia this condition can be treated by using mirtazapine as a first line agent at low dose beta blockers and benzodiazepines can also be used as alternatives anticholinergics like benzodiazepine can be used in the people who are having akathisia along with parkinsonism so that's all about this today's topic i i hope this video is useful to you if you really like this video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and relatives thanks for watching See you in the next video.